Hello maths fans! Today I am on location in Cambridge where I'm going to be sharing three legends related to Isaac Newton and I want you to try to figure out which two of these are true and which one is a lie. The first legend that I will be... Hang on a minute. Um, James? Is that you? Tom Crawford! Hi! How what is this? Some sort of YouTube video or something? I, I think it might be, yeah. <laughs> do you want do you wanna do you wanna help out? Yes, yeah. So I hear you're doing two truths and a lie. That's the plan. As yep. a local, I think I can help out. Uh, and I think I've got a really good one to start with. Alright, where are we going? We're going right over there to the Isaac Newton Institute. Follow me, walk this way. So our first legend is not about Isaac Newton the man, but it is about the Newton building where we are. Uh, so what is so special about this room that we are in? This is the very lecture theatre where Andrew Wiles first presented or first announced that he had proven Fermat's last theorem, which had famously remained unsolved for 358 years after Pierre de Fermat wrote in the margin of his Arithmetica textbook that he had a proof, but the margin was too small to contain it. And so you're claiming this is the very room? This is the exact room where that announcement was first made. So everyone, what do you think? Is that truth or is it a lie? Our second Newton legend relates to this tree outside of Trinity College. Yes, so our legend is that Newton said that his theory of gravity was inspired by watching an apple fall from a tree. And this tree here outside of Trinity College is actually a descendant of that very apple tree. This tree is related to Newton's tree. What do you think, everyone? Is that a truth or is that a lie? And finally, for our third legend, we are in Queen's College, and our third legend regards this bridge here. It's called the Mathematical Bridge. Sometimes it's called the Newton Bridge. And why is that, Tom? So our third legend mm. is that this very bridge was designed by Isaac Newton, and Newton designed it to not contain any bolts. <laughs> now, you may notice that this bridge does contain bolts. And that's because some students thought it would be a fun challenge to take the bridge apart and try to put it back together. But of course, they weren't Isaac Newton. And so they had to resort to using bolts, which is why they remain today. So again, this is up to you. What do you think? Is that a truth or is it a lie? So that means we have now presented all three of our Newton mm -hmm. legends. We've got the Newton building, the Newton tree, and the Newton Bridge. And we should stress that these are all genuine legends in Cambridge. If you visit Cambridge, if you take a tour of Cambridge, you might be told these stories. But unfortunately, uh, two of them are true, but one is a lie. So it's up to you now to figure it out. Which two are true, which one is the lie, and we will reveal the answers in just a moment. Whilst you're trying to work out which of the Isaac Newton stories are true and which are false, be sure to check out the accompanying worksheet I've put together in Maple Learn. We begin with a look at Fermat's last theorem, which states that there are no whole number solutions to the equation a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n whenever n is an integer greater than 2. In the first question, we use this result to investigate elliptic curves and whether or not the given equation has rational solutions. Next, we move on to Newton's law of gravity and a comparison of the strength of the Earth's gravitational field for an apple on the surface of the planet versus the field strength on the moon. Finally, we look at the mathematical bridge in more detail, calculating the arc length of the circular section used in its construction and looking at how closely the polygonal shape approximates a circle. Just click the link in the video description to access the worksheet for free and if you would like to sign up for premium to access all of the features Maple Learn has to offer, be sure to use the discount code in the box below. Now, back to Cambridge. So legend number one was about the Newton building here, where we said that this was the building that Andrew Wiles first announced his proof for Fermat's last theorem. So, Tom, was that a truth or was it a lie? This one is a truth. Yeah. James. So the lecture by Andrew Wiles uh, was given on the 23rd of June mm -hmm. 1993 yep. uh, and it was entitled 
um, Galois representations, elliptic curves, and modular forms. Well remembered. And this was his first presentation of what he believed was a correct proof to Fermat's Slash Theorem. Of course, if you know the story, yeah. it then took a further two years. Um, there was a slight error in the first proof, yeah. uh, but that was corrected, and the verified proof was published in 1995. So that's a really special thing about this building. I wonder if there are any other interesting mathematical facts about uh, the CMS here. Well, the building behind us is the literal center for mathematical sciences, the maths department here at the University of Cambridge, and the buildings themselves are also incredibly mathematical. So you may notice the chimneys on the tops of the buildings. So these actually create natural ventilation so they create a tunnel through the center of the building, which allows the air to flow in, and then it seeps out through the bottom. And these are designed to keep the buildings warm in winter mm -hmm. and cool in summer, and it saves energy and therefore is very good for the environment. Which would please you as someone who studies fluids. For me, though, as a pure mathematician, uh, I've got a fact that I learnt like yesterday, and that's a shame because I've worked here for years, which is that the buildings here are actually in the shape of a parabola, which is a nice little mathematical thing. Also something I didn't know, despite also having yeah. worked in this very building uh, for many years. And I'm sure there are plenty of other things that we could find out and could share about this building, given it is the Mathematical Institute. But we have a second legend. Yes, let's do it. Need to go and investigate. So legend number two, James claimed that the apple tree behind us outside of Trinity College was a direct descendant of the Isaac Newton apple tree. Mm. Truth or lie? So, rather remarkably, that's actually true, which is difficult to believe that that it is. is true. <laughs> so first part, First of all, there's like two parts to this. There's, there's the legend of the apple tree. And I feel it's safe to claim that this is true. Well, Newton did tell the story himself, that he was inspired in his theory of gravity by watching an apple fall from an apple tree in his garden. He told that story himself many times. So I feel like as far as possible, we can say that that is a true, well, at least a true Agreed. story. Yeah. And the second thing is, is this a descendant of that apple tree. Well, this is what surprised me. When I heard this story, I always imagined it was an orchard. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. This, was actually, this actually happened in Newton's garden. And there is only one apple tree in Newton's garden. It's still there today. It's 400 years old. And this tree over here is actually a descendant of that apple tree. So as far as we can possibly say, uh, it's true. So that means we now have had two legends, both of which are true. So hopefully you can figure out the third and final one is going to be a lie. Oh no, what a giveaway. We now know that third legend is a lie, but here is Tom to tell us more about the story. This bridge, the yep. mathematical bridge, the Newton Bridge, has nothing to do with Isaac Newton. No. It was designed by William Etheridge more than 20 years after Newton's death. So definitely not designed <laughs> nope. by Isaac Newton, no. And the story about the bolts yep. is also exactly that. It is a story. Um, we've actually heard it a few times from the people on the punts. Yep, yes. Yeah, so you, you will hear this story. If you come to Cambridge, you will hear this story, but it's completely made up. It's not true. It is, but it is based on the sort of design of the bridge and the reason it has its name as the mathematical bridge yeah. because the shape is a voisin arch which mm. is where the compression of the various pieces actually mm. acts to give the bridge its strength which is perhaps why that has been embellished into this legend yeah. of not needing any so bolts. It's very clever but what interested me as a pure mathematician as well is what is the shape of this bridge if it's so strong? It is a circle. It's actually based on a circle of radius yeah. 32 feet each of the beams is tangential to that circle and is even at an angle of 1 over 32 radians. So it's really mathematical. It's very so mathematical. I now understand why it's called the Mathematical Bridge. And what I learned when I was researching these sort of legends of Cambridge is I got really into this Newton apple tree stuff. Uh, and I discovered there's actually quite a few of these descendants around. We saw the descendant at Trinity College. There's actually another descendant of the Newton tree at the Newton Institute, which we found earlier on today. Mm -hmm. And I believe Queen's College is supposed to have a descendant of the apple tree as well. Shall we go and try and find it? I, I think we should. Okay. 
and here it is, or here is where it's not, because this is where it used to be. It's actually not here anymore. They got rid of it in 1993. It's not actually here anymore because they forgot. They forgot what it was. They forgot it was a descendant of the Newton tree. <laughs> It's not Shocking. there anymore. I, I, I imagine somebody probably got fired for that. <laughs> um, or at least they, maybe they deserve to. Um, but what that does mean, this is an interesting thing we actually discovered during our tour today, yeah. is not only have we shared with you three yeah. legends about Isaac Newton, yeah. but the three locations we have been to around Cambridge <laughs> are current or former locations of descendants of the Isaac Newton. Yeah, it's pretty oh. cool, isn't it? And there's quite a few of these around the world in like prestigious universities and places like that. And they're all descended from that same tree, that Newton tree, which I really got into when I was looking this up. <laughs> so yeah, see if you can find some and send us photos. <laughs> um, James, thank you so much. No um, problem at all, loved it. For being my guide today. Um, if you haven't already, do check out James's channel, Singing Banana, or his many, many number file videos, Mr. Number File, as I refer to him over here. Um, oh, and excuse he, me, Dr. Number File. Dr. Excuse, Number File. Uh, excuse me, I didn't do a PhD <laughs> for no reason. Fair point, fair point. Uh, and a huge thank you to all of you, as always, for watching. Please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this, and I will see you soon with some more maths fun. Take care. That uh, Andrew Wiles, or we should let that person be. <laughs> Your star. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool stuff. Um, given, I'll just, because I'm going to put your image on there, so that's fine. I got distracted by the person walking right past us just as we were finishing the clip. It was entitled um, Gawa Representations, Elliptic Curves, and Modular Forms. Well remembered. Or something of that nature. <laughs> I'll put the correct title on the screen. Oh, I knew I was going to forget the title of Bloody Lecture. I think okay. you got it right. Modular just, Forms. I think you got it right. I just, elliptic I just, Curves. I was pulling your leggings. <laughs> um, and the reason the story actually exists... <laughs> we, can't, we can't take that. We can't do that one. <laughs> All right, 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 one more go. Here we go, here we go, here we go.